Hey everybody, how you doing? Mr. Buckman here. And today I will be reading A Bad Case of Stripes by David Shannon. Please enjoy. A Bad Case of Stripes. Camilla Cream loved lima beans, but she never ate them. All of her friends hated lima beans, and she wanted to fit in. Camilla was always worried about what other people thought of her. Today she was fretting even more than usual. It was the first day of school and she couldn't decide what to wear. There were so many people to impress. She tried on 42 outfits, but none seemed quite right. She put on a pretty red dress and looked in the mirror. Then she screamed. Her mother ran into the room and she screamed too. Oh my heavens, she cried. You're completely covered with stripes. This was certainly true. Camilla was striped from head to toe. This was certainly true. Camilla was striped from head to toe. She looked like a rainbow. Miss Cream felt Camilla's forehead. Do you feel all right, she asked. I feel fine, Camilla said, but just look at me. You get back in bed this instant, her mother ordered. You're not going to school today. Camilla was relieved. She didn't want to miss the first day of school, but she was afraid of what other kids would say, and she had no idea what to wear with those crazy stripes. That afternoon, Dr. Bumble came to examine Camilla. Most extraordinary, he explained. I've never seen anything like it. Are you having any coughs, sneezes, runny nose, aches, pains, chills, hot flashes, dizziness, drowsiness, shortest of breath, or uncontrollable twitching? No, Camilla said. I feel fine. Well then, Dr. Bumble said, turning to Miss Cream, I don't see any reason why she shouldn't go to school tomorrow. Here's some ornament that will help her clear up these stripes in a few days. If it doesn't, you know where to reach me. And off he went. The next day was disaster. Everyone at school laughed at Camilla. They called her Camilla Cran and Night of the Living Lollipop. She tried her best to act as if everything was normal, but when the class said the Pledge of Allegiance, her stripes turned red, white, and blue, and she broke out in stars. The other kids thought this was great. One yelled out, Let's! See some purple polka dots. Sure enough, Camilla turned all purple polka dotty. Someone else shouted, Checkerboard! And a pattern of squares covered her skin. Soon everyone was calling her out different shapes and colors, and poor Camilla was changing faster than you could change channels on a TV. That night, Mr. Harms, the school principal, called. I'm sorry, Miss Cream, he said. I'm going to have to talk to you to keep Camilla home from school. She's just too much of a distraction, and I've been getting calls from other parents. They're afraid these stripes may be contagious. Camilla was so embarrassed she didn't believe that 
two days ago, everyone liked her. Now everybody wanted to be in the same room with her. Her father tried to make her feel better. Is there anything I can do? Can get you, sweetheart, he asked. No, thank you, sighed Camilla. What she really wanted was a nice plate of lima beans. But she had been laughed at enough for one day. Hmm, well, yes, I see, Dr. Bumble mumbled when Mr. Cream phoned the next day. I think I'd better bring in a specialist. We'll be right over. About an hour later, Dr. Bumble arrived with four people in long white coats. He introduced them to the Creams. This is Dr. Grope. Dr. Sponge and Dr. Cricket and Dr. Young. Then the specialist went to work on Kamala. They squeezed, jabbed, tapped, and tested. It was very uncomfortable. Well, it's not the mumps, concluded Dr. Grope. Or the measles, said Dr. Sponge. Definitely not chicken pots, put in Dr. Cricket. Or sunbirds, said Dr. Young. Try, try these, said the specialist. They each handed her a bottle filled with different color pills. Take one of each before bed, said Dr. Grope. Then they filled out the front, they filed out the front door, following by Dr. Bumble. That night, Camilla took her medicine. It was awful. When she woke up the next morning, she didn't feel different. But when she got dressed, her clothes didn't fit right. She looked in the mirror, and there, staring at her, was a giant multiple color pills. Her face on it. Dr. Bumble reached over as soon as Miss Cream called. But this time, instead of the specialists, he brought experts. Dr. Grood and Mr. Mellon were the finest specialist minds in the land. Once again, Camilla had poked and pounded or prodded looking at and listening to. The expert wrote down lots of numbers. Then they huddled together and whispered. Dr. Grood finally spoke. It might be a virus, he announced, with authorities. Suddenly, fuzzy little virus balls appeared all over Camilla. You're possibly... Some form of bacteria, said Mr. Mullen, out of popped, squiggly little bacteria trails. Or it could be a fungus, added Dr. Grood. Instantly, Camilla was covered with different colored fungus blots. The experts looked at Camilla, then each other. We need to go over these numbers again. Back at the lab, said Dr. Grood, explained, we'll call you when we know something. But the experts didn't have a clue, much less a cure. By now, the TV news had found out about Camilla. Reporters from every channel went outside her house telling the story of the bazaar case of the incredible changing kid. Soon a huge crowd was camped out in the front yard. The creams were swamped with all kinds of remedies from psychologist Al Al 
lastas, her bastas, nur Raptor does psychics, an old medicine man, a gurgur, even a veterinarian, each so called cure only added a poor Camilla's strange appearance until it was hard to even recognize her. She sprouted roots and berries and crystals and feathers and a long furry tail, but nothing worked. One day, a woman who called herself an environment therapist claimed she cured Camilla. Close your eyes, she said. Breathe deeply and become one of one with your room. I wish you hadn't said that, Camilla groaned. Slowly, she started to mount into the walls of her room. Her bedroom became her mouth. Her nose was a dresser, and the two paintings were her eyes. The therapist screamed and ran from the house. What are we going to do, cried Miss Cream. It just keeps getting worse and worse. She began to sob. At this moment, Mr. Cream heard a quiet little knock at the front door. He opened it, and there stood an old woman who was just as plump and sweet as strawberry. Excuse me, she said brightly, but I think I can help. She went to, into Camilla's room and looked around. My goodness, she said with a shake of a hand, head. What we have here is a bad case of stripes, one of the most I've ever seen. She pulled a container of a small green bean from her bag. Here, she said, this might do the trick. Are those magic beans, asked Miss Cream. Oh my, no, replied the old woman. There's no such thing. These are just plain old lima beans. I'll bet you'll like some. Wouldn't you, ask, she asked Camilla. Camilla wanted a big leaping plateful of lima beans more than just about anything, but she was still afraid to admit it. Yuck, she said. No more lima beans, especially me. Oh dear, the old woman said sadly. I guess I was wrong about you. You put the beans back in your bag and started towards the door. Camilla watched the old woman walk away. Those beans will taste so good and being laughed at for eating them was nothing compared to what she been going through. She finally couldn't stand it. Wait, she cried. The truth is I really love lima beans. I thought so, the old woman said with a smile. She took a handful of beans, popped them in the Camilla's mouth. Mmm, said Camilla. Suddenly, the branches, feathers, squiggly tail began to disappear. Then the whole room swirled around. When it was stopped, there stood Camilla, and everything was back to normal. I'm cured, she shouted. Yes, said the old woman. I knew the real you was in there somewhere. She patted Camilla on the head. Then she went outside and vanished into the crowd. Afterwards, Camilla wasn't quite the same. Some of the kids at school said she was weird, but she didn't care a bit. She ate all her lima beans she wanted, and she never even she never had even touched of stripes again. Wow, <laughs> poor little girl had. Bad case of stripes. <laughs> what would you do if you had a bad case of stripes? <laughs> Let me know in the... Well, you can't comment in the comment box, but... Uh, leave a comment. If you can. And let me know what 
we, what you would do if you had to eat lima beans. And do you like lima beans? If you like lima beans, give me a thumbs up. like to know. Well, everybody, hope all of you enjoyed this story time. And I want to say thank you very much for watching and enjoying. And everybody out there, you have a good one and a safe one. Until next time, I am Mr. Bookman, and this story time is over. Have a good one, everybody, and take care.